Welcome to Get Your Spirit in Shape, United Methodist Communications and UMC.org's podcast to help keep our souls as healthy as our bodies. I'm Joy Avino. In this episode, we get to meet United Methodist Bishop Cynthia Moore Kakoy of the Western Pennsylvania Conference, who grew up the child of a United Methodist pastor. In her early life, there may have been some foreshadowing of what was to come. We did things as a family, so we all packed up and we went to annual conference together. And I, I can remember sitting on the floor at annual conference and just saying, wow, this is really exciting stuff. Before becoming a pastor, she worked for 17 years as a school psychologist, helping children and parents look beyond limitations to see possibility and potential. Today, the bishop uses those same gifts in the church. We are providing an atmosphere for people to first recognize their gifts and then to live into the full potential of their gifts so that God's kingdom might be built. In this conversation, we talk about growing up in the church as a preacher's kid, a dream that helped clarify her call to ministry, and how meditation and acupuncture help keep her spirit in shape. Meet Bishop Cynthia Moore Kikoi. I'm on the phone today with Bishop Cynthia Moore Kikoi. Welcome, Bishop. Thank you. I understand from your bio that you grew up a PK, a preacher's kid. (laughs) Yeah, I grew up uh, not just a preacher's kid, but also on my dad's side of the family, fourth generation Methodist, on my mom's side of the family, third generation Methodist. So Methodism is all through me. But, you know, grew up around the Baltimore Washington Annual Conference as my as my father got appointed to to different places. And my my mom throughout my growing up was a stay at home mom. And so church was our life. I remember as a small child going to board meetings, going to charge conferences, just always being around the life of the church. And throughout um, most of, actually, until I was in high school, we lived next door to the church. So we always lived in the church parsonage, right. which was, uh, when I was first born, right across the street from, from the church. <laughs> um, during my early elementary years, it was the church was down the hill from the, from the uh, parsonage. And then when I was in middle school, the church was on a corner of the parking lot of the church. So always in in very close physical proximity to the church, physical proximity, but then also spiritual proximity to the church. Yeah, did you say you were like going to meetings and stuff with your dad? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, I can can remember that we would take our, our school homework (laughs) <laughs> to board meetings, and my mom would set us up in the kitchen or some other place in the church, and we would sit down and we'd do our homework while they were yes. they were meeting. Yes. My mom was a church secretary, and I have similar memories of sitting on the floor kind of coloring or doing homework while some meeting was going on that I had no clue what was actually happening there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Did you move a lot? Was that a easy thing or difficult thing? Um, we, we didn't move a whole lot. I st- we were at the same church while I was in elementary school in my first year of junior high school. We did move when I was in seventh grade, and that was a hard move, as you can imagine. Oh, That's yeah. a hard time for anyone, <laughs> particularly yeah. a, a girl, um, <laughs> to, to have to move to a new school and learn a new place. So that was a, a, a challenge of a move, but um, but we kind of settled in pretty quickly to the place. We moved from Aberdeen, Maryland, which was a a kind of a rural community at, at the time. In fact, um, our neighbors on one side it, it were cows, <laughs> <laughs> and on the other side there was a forest. Um, we moved from that setting to Silver Spring, Maryland, which is an urban setting. Yeah. Um, And so I had to adjust to that, a different lifestyle, and and also new kinds of friends. Um, But the the church really embraced us. Um, And um, quickly I I gained some good friends that went to school with me and were part of the church, um, because the church was very active and had an active youth group. So that made a difficult transition easier than it could have been. Sure. What were some of the fun things about being a preacher's kid? I, you know, I, being a preacher's kid, I, I can remember a lot of church dinners, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that being fun, Yeah, um, helping out for those church dinners. And then um, it, my parents were, were very, my mom and dad were very involved in the church, and we often had church meetings in the parsonage. 
And so I can remember the excitement of watching my mom prepare a meal, some kind of refreshments for the folks that are going to be coming over to our house. Uh, and I actually enjoyed that kind of thing. Sure. I enjoyed kind of sitting on the steps and listening in on the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Indication of things to come, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, because I can also remember loving going to annual conference. Hmm. The annual conference was not something that my dad enjoyed going to at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, again, we did things as a family, so we all packed up and we went to annual conference together. And I, I can remember sitting on the floor at annual conference and just saying, wow, this is really exciting stuff. Wow. As, as a young kid, I remember that. But ministry wasn't your first career, right? You went to school and became a school psychologist? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, even in high school, I had an inkling that I had a call to the ministry, but I resisted that call for a whole lot of reasons um, and went into school psychology and enjoyed doing that. I worked um, for a public school system for 17 years and really liked that kind of work, working with, with kids who others had written off, Mm. working with parents who were struggling to figure out how to find the appropriate resources for their kids, and working with parents, particularly mothers, as they went through that process of grief, of mourning the child that they thought they had, while coming to a, a real understanding of the child that they had, and for me to point out to them the strengths that their child had that they needed to build on and to help them not focus on their child's weaknesses or their child's disability, but help them more more to focus on their child's abilities Mm. and for them to see then what the possibility and potential was for their child. I I really enjoyed doing, doing that kind of work. I can imagine. It sounds difficult but really rewarding. Yeah, yeah. To, to see a child learn something that somebody said they couldn't ever learn, that was really rewarding. To work with a teacher, to be able to help a teacher see the real potential in a child, mm. that was exciting. And then to be able to, to make some real systemic changes in a school building so that all children in that building enjoyed um, an atmosphere that was more conducive to learning, um, that was really rewarding, too. Were there any skills that you see from that career that carried over into pastoral ministry and into your work today as a bishop? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You're looking at some of the systems and um, looking at how you evaluate a system in order to determine whether or not a system is doing its best to help everyone reach their potential. I did a lot of that work as a school psychologist, and a lot of that is what I do as a bishop. Mm. You know, as a, as a bishop, a lot of what I do is, is making sure that we are providing an atmosphere for people to first recognize their gifts and then to live into the full potential of their gifts so that God's kingdom might be built. So those skills certainly transfer over. And then, of course, all of the assessment skills that I learned as a school psychologist transfer over um, into being a bishop, looking at individuals and their strengths and their weaknesses certainly transfers over, and then just basic listening skills, mm. you know, listening to folks, hearing hearing their their passions, hearing their fears, hearing their joys. And one of the things that I get to do as a bishop that I didn't always get to do as a school psychologist is to be able to point out to folks where God is in their story. As I'm hearing their story, to be able to to point out those places where God showed up um, and really made a difference and helped their story turn this way or that way. Um, I get to do that as as a bishop, and that's really rewarding. So what what made the change? When did you decide that it was time to move into pastoral ministry and out of the school psychology. As a layperson, I was very involved in the church. I was in the years when we had uh, lay speakers, mm-hmm. just lay speakers. I was a certified lay speaker um, and was very involved in my local church, but also on the district level. And people kept saying to me, you're called, you're called, you're called. And I kept saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and my the, my pastor at the time, Bruce Haskins, allowed me 
the opportunity to preach a number of times during the course of a year. And I distinctly remember that after one time that I preached, a dear old prayer warrior in the church came to greet me at the back of the sanctuary. (laughs) And she said, when are you going to answer your call? It's clear you're called. And I said to her, I fully believe that you have heard from God, but I haven't yet heard from God. And she said to me, then I know exactly how to pray. And I knew when she said that it was over. (laughs) (laughs) And after that, God just gave me sign after sign that was undeniable, just Hmm. sign after sign. And so I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't run anymore couldn't run anymore. And so um, I I told my parents, and I told my pastor, um, and I started down that path. Yeah, I'm fascinated with these call stories, because I think so many of us hear God speaking, and we're really unsure of it. So when when you talk about sign after sign, can can you tell me more about that? Like, what was, what what did you see that, that, that pointed you in this direction? So one of my wrestlings with God was that I was making good money as a school psychologist. Hmm. And because I had been to all the charge conferences, I knew how much money my dad made, (laughs) (laughs) how much money my current pastor made. And I said to God, you know, God, I like nice things. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I'm not sure how this pastor thing is going to work out. And so, you know, I'd been in a time of prayer about that, and um, I went to an event where there was a Cokesbury display, and I picked up a number of things, as I always do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I'm at a Cokesbury display, and I went to the, to the cashier, and the cashier said, you look like you could use the clergy discount. And I said, there's a clergy discount? <laughs> and he said, Absolutely. And I said, well, I'm not clergy, but it's good to know that there is a clergy discount. (laughs) Um, And and then then God called back to my recollection that wrestling time I'd had with God about the provisions (laughs) that there were for a pastor. And and God just said to me, I got this. You know, don't worry about that. That's amazing. Um, and, And then there was, you know, another time where I was away at a Black Methodist for Church Renewal convention, and a clergy friend of my father's invited me to have lunch with him, and I, he and I were sitting, we were having lunch, and we were talking about a number of different things. I had not shared with him that um, I was wrestling with a call at all, but in the middle of the conversation, he said, so when are you going to answer your call? <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? And he said, it's clear to me, (laughs) God has shown me that you're called to the ministry. (laughs) What are your reservations? Oh. Yeah, and so he and I had a conversation about about my reservations, and he helped me to see how God had already made a way in the midst of of all the concerns that I had. And then uh, another thing that happened was I had a dream. In the dream, there was a real high pulpit, and I was being, I felt as if I was being pulled or drawn to that pulpit, and I said to the force that was pulling me there, that's not my pulpit, that's my dad's pulpit. Mm. And the voice, the force that was pulling me there said in a voice that I could hear, no, that's not your dad's pulpit, this one's for you. Wow. Yeah. That's a yeah. powerful, that's now, a powerful part vision. Of, part of my wrestling had been that my personality is completely different than my dad's. Mm-hmm. My dad was a shepherd-type pastor, and my I'm more of an administrator-type pastor. So I was I had been wrestling with that, that I, I'm not that person. <laughs> I'm yeah, not my yeah, dad. Yeah. And then I had that dream. Yeah. Um, now you're a bishop, and I know that being a bishop is a super busy job, but what do you do when you have some free time? What do you do just for yourself to relax? So I am madly in love with the man that I'm married to, Rafael <laughs> Kukoy, and so we try to spend as much free time together as we can. We try to make sure that we have to schedule date nights. <laughs> Wonderful. So, yeah, we schedule time to, you know, we like to go out to the movies, or we've been been learning about the um, the the restaurant scene here in Pittsburgh, and we, so we've been spending some time uh, eating out, which has been fun. Yeah. 
And I also like to sew. So when I do have some free time, I, I do, a, do some sewing. The, the robe that I typically wear when then there are formal events where we have to have a white robe for, I typically I wear the robe that I made. Oh, wow. Um, so, I, yeah, I like to take time out to, to do that. It kind of calms me down a little bit. That's fantastic. So the question that I ask everybody that I have on Get Your Spirit in Shape is, what's a practice that you use to help keep your spirit in shape that you would recommend that others try? Um, I've got a couple. One is, is meditation. Um, I've got a meditation tape that I, that I listen to when my mind starts racing a lot. It really helps me to help empty my thoughts so that I can hear from God. So if there's a decision I need to make, I, I put on that meditation tape. If I'm stuck in sermon writing, I put on that meditation tape. I also like to do Lecto Divina, uh, and I often try to com- combine that with meditation. That really helps me to, to focus on God's Word and to hear God's way in new and, and relevant ways. And then lastly, I've found that combining meditation or Lecto Divina with acupuncture is phenomenal. Wow. Um, I've had some, some real times where I have felt the presence of Jesus Christ with me while meditating and, and doing acupuncture. It's, it's really been, I've, I've had some phenomenal, phenomenal experiences. How did, how did you, I'm just curious, how did you get exposed to acupuncture? Well, I used to go to a doctor, he since has, has died, um, but I used to go to a doctor who was trained in both Western med- medicine and also in, in more Eastern mm-hmm. types of medicine. And so he was an internist, but also did acupuncture. And I was going through some health issues, and he suggested acupuncture. And because he also was, uh, was very spiritual, um, he suggested to me, he said, I know you're a woman of faith, you know, why don't you try praying while you're undergoing this acupuncture? And I did. And yeah. it was phenomenal. Wow. Well, I just want to thank you so much for being a part of this today and for, for having this conversation. Well, thank you so much for all that you're doing to, to help make bishops more real. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that was United Methodist Bishop Cynthia Moore Kakoy of the Western Pennsylvania Conference. To learn more about her, go to umc.org slash podcasts and look for the page for this episode. To hear more conversations from our bishops, look for Bishop's Personal Faith Stories, also at umc.org slash podcasts. Thanks for listening. I'll be back soon with another conversation to help keep our souls as healthy as our bodies. I'm Joe Iovino. Peace.